Are you living the life you want? Spending enough time with the ones you love? Welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show where you'll learn how becoming a successful real estate investor can change your life like it did ours. We're here to help you reach all of your goals and create wealth through real estate investing. So let's roll. Hi, welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show with your host, Glenn and Amber. Hey, everybody. Where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. Got a great show lined up for you today. So here we go. Let's get rolling. Yep. So we get questions all the time about how to start flipping houses, how to start building a rental portfolio. So today's podcast is all about you. And listen, we would love to feature your questions. So if you have questions in the future, make sure that you post them below or get them to us and you may be featured on one of our future podcasts. Very cool. So let's jump into the first question. Why don't you read it for us? All right. So this is from Billy. And Billy says, hi, Glenn and Amber. I love you guys. Thank you. We love you too. Uh, I have been watching you all on YouTube and was super impressed. I just graduated high school. Oh, so he's young. Uh, and have been chosen and have chosen to get my real estate license. College is not for me. I have a good friend who just made $20,000 from flipping his first home here in good old Atlanta. And I'm wondering if you have any tips on how to get started. How do I flip houses when I have no money? I'm new to the game and need lots of help. P.S. I don't want to live with mom and dad forever. I'm sure they don't want you to live with them forever, Billy. So, <laughs> so that's probably a good fit. <laughs> Why don't I take that? Because I so I uh, started being an entrepreneur at 19 years old. Left home at 18 years old and became an entrepreneur. Started my first company at 19 years old. So I understand youth. Certainly, youth is on your side here. Um, and you and, understand entrepreneurship because you've always been an entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm wondering, Billy, if you're the same way. I wonder if you have always thought about your own business of some kind. I remember thinking about my first wiring business. I was going to wire people's houses for phones back when phones had wires attached to them. And so that was my first uh, business idea, I think, when I was younger. And so that translated into an alarm company. And then that uh, led into, I've been in business for 31 years now, something yeah. like that. So I respect that. Um, so you want to know about how to get money and kind of how to get started. You know, when you're younger, it's possible. It might be a little more challenging, but it's certainly always possible. The great thing is you want to find a deal first. So if you can find a deal first, the deal will bring money. Now, what I mean is if you find a deal that is, you know, priced way below market value, um, and we have a lot of um, videos on this, you can search us and find stuff. But if you find a house that's priced right, you get it low enough, there's enough profit built into it. The great news is there are people that will lend you money on that, even if you're 18. You may have to get a co-signer, that, that may happen, but you might be able to get a private lender on a deal like that. And there's plenty of those out there through hard money lenders. Um, you can, there's local groups called your local RIAs you can go to. We just had our RIA last night, I don't think I told you, but three young men came up to me and, and joined the group. They were 18 years old. And I said, you guys, I said, you guys remind me of me. So I gave them some pointers on how to get started. But um, youth, youth, having youth on your side is a really important thing. Thing, but um, and I think investing in real estate too is different than just going out and trying to get a car loan or a regular bank house loan because it's yeah. tied to a piece of real estate. So yeah. you know, there's there's less risk for the lender there yeah. too. Yep. So um, I guess continue on. <laughs> so you know, what you want to do is is find confidence when you're young, and that can be something that you lack as a young person. Um, and so you want to make sure that you go in confident and, you know, go after what you want and really take action there. You want to mm. get the education that you need um, to be knowledgeable in your area of real estate. Yeah. And you don't have to know the whole United States. Just focus on, you know, a 10 or a 15 or a 20 mile radius around where you live. Get to know that area. Get to know the school districts. What's a good street? What's a bad street? All that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then... So many lenders to choose from. There are, like you just said, there's traditional lending methods. There are private lenders. Um, and being that real estate is, is as popular as it is right now, and I don't see that trend going away anytime soon, do no, you? No, no, no. <laughs> you know, the, that source of income, and the, or not income, but that source of money, the lending, isn't going anywhere either. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is come to our workshop. We have a home Definitely. flipping workshop. It's a three-day, really intensive course that really gets you off the ground running. The home flipping workshop. Yep. Could look at something, a little self-promotion there. So, you know, the, the truth is, Billy, you probably think you don't have resources when you're young, but you do. So I want to kind of just grab you to say you have resources. You can't give up on your dream. You got to go for this. So there are resources that are out there that are available to you. So, um, You'll have a lot, your future will be very different. A lot more doors will open up to you, but you got to stay the course and remember what your dream is. It's important to go for that. And it's so awesome that he's thinking about this at such a young age. Totally. Because not everybody has that mentality at a young age, but the younger you start, you know, there's never a bad time to start in real estate, no, no. matter what age you are. But no. the younger you start, you know, 
You just have all that more potential. Yeah. So you got this, Billy. You can certainly do it. Um, you know, age is certainly on your side, which is great. Um, you know, if you're like Billy or you're a parent of someone like Billy, there's a lot more resources available than you think. When you hear that there's no money down on deals, that's true. It doesn't have, you don't have to have money. Um, you have to have money, but it's not to be your money. So as long as you know where to go for those things, it's a, it's a great way. If you are a parent of someone like Billy, you borrow money to buy your house probably, and probably to buy a larger car or a new car that you had, right? So you already borrow money for things that have value. Same thing happens with real estate investing. You can borrow the to purchase the house. You can also borrow for the repairs. So you can borrow a, a lion's share of that. So there's a lot of resources available to you, and that'll uh, allow you to uh, be able to retire sooner, Billy, and have a just do what you want with the rest of your life. Yeah, it's so awesome that you're thinking about this at such a young, totally. young age. All right, we have another question here from Beth. Beth said, hi, my husband and I have talked about flipping for years. We have watched all the TV shows, but haven't been able to pull the trigger. Can't pull the trigger. <laughs> we want a better life for our family and think this could be part of it. But we fear, we think fear is holding us back. I personally am scared to death. Huh. How do I get over the fear to take action? What a fantastic question, Beth. You know, I, we, I, I understand totally how you feel. We both do because we were very scared in the beginning. If you've yeah. watched our other podcast, you know we were down to like our last <laughs> last money, $1,400 or whatever yes, it was yeah. in the bank Everything. or credit yeah. or anything. So, yeah. you know, we get it. We, we totally understand change is scary. Um, whether that change is good or bad, sometimes it can be scary. But, you know, if you're, if you're sick of being where you're at, the thought of staying where you're at is also scary. So you kind of have to decide which one's more scary. Yeah. We found that once you get the knowledge, that that fear dissipates. And that's the kind of the great thing about fear is when you gain that knowledge, it dissolves. But life still goes on. So you can take action towards your, towards your future when that, when that education sinks in. You know, think about yeah. when you first rode a bike. You know, that's scary at first. You know, you know your parents going to let go off of the back one of those yeah. times. But then like, once you get the pedals going and you get your balance, then it's not scary anymore. So that fear does go away. Yeah. You know, when, when your fear of staying where you are um, becomes great enough that you want to have a better life, when that fear comes, that's when things start to happen. So if you start looking at your life and say, okay, if I don't do anything, what's going to happen? And that's what will make you take action. And I was reading in your, in your email here, I mean, we took a, or your, your email, your question here. It said, um, you know, fear is holding us back and we're having a hard time pulling the trigger. Think about what life's like if you don't pull the trigger. Maybe that's the motivation you need. What is life like if you don't pull the trigger? What does it look like now, a year from now, five years from now, 20 years from now? What's, if you don't pull the trigger and do real estate investing, we believe it's the best way for average people to create wealth. We're living proof of that. So if you don't pull the trigger... What's going to happen in your life? So maybe that motivation will help you know you to start moving. So you got to get out of your own way. You got to get out of your own way. That's, we talk about that in our workshops all the time. We say, well, what are we doing this weekend? We're going to help you get out of your own way because yeah. we all get bogged down with our own fears. We all have them, and that's really what happens. So I think it's important that we move on past fear so that you can uh, go for a better life. That's real growth happens when you start to uh, to get past your own head trash. Yep. So, you know, if you were one of our students, we'd take you by the hand and we'd lead you down a path. You know, and the first question we would ask you is, are you happy with your yeah. life the way it is? And then what's your why? You know, why, why do you want to do this? What would that extra income? And it's never about flipping houses or the money itself, but what would that money do for you? Would it provide you some sort of freedom? Would it provide you relief? You know, what, you, you, what, what would that do for you? How would you feel if you had that extra income in your life? And then we would also teach you that action overcomes fear. So, always. Yeah, always. Yeah. So, you know, make forward steps. Take, take, even if they're baby steps at first, you know, even if it's just getting to know your local market, like we told Billy. Or, even while you're scared. Right. I think while you're scared, it's important, too. If you're riding a bike and you're, you know, when you first learn how to ride a bike, try and think back how long ago that was, you're scared, but you're still pressing on. I think if you, when you have fear, you have to keep pressing on little right. steps. Right, right. That's important. Yeah, even if they're those little baby steps. And then three, we would just keep imparting to you that that knowledge is going to overcome fear. So get educated. So we've developed really, it's been a tried and true formula to help people reach their goals through real estate investing. So you have to reach out and grab it. Mm -hmm. There's information there, but our formula has worked. It's helped hundreds of people be able to reach their goals and change their life. And we're looking for that to be thousands, which we're interested. We're excited about going nationwide with our business. Definitely. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to that. So it's... I keep saying it because it's really important. Real estate is the best way for average people like us to create true wealth and even generational wealth. 
Yep, so if you're like Beth, which a lot of you are, and I know that because Beth's question is probably one of the top questions that we get. Totally. <laughs> all the here. time. Yeah. Like we, we hear that question all the time. Um, so if you're like her, first of all, find a mentor and find somebody that has what you want. Don't just go out and take advice from anybody in the internet that, because Glenn has oh, an expression, God. it's one of my favorite ones of yours. Uh, be careful who you take advice from because you might end up just like them. I think we even talked about that in a different podcast. Definitely. But it's worth repeating. Yeah. Because if somebody doesn't have what you want, you know, John, your Uncle John might be trying to protect you and give you certain advice. But if he doesn't have what you want, then don't listen to his advice. Yeah. Find somebody that has what you want because success leaves clues. And then follow what they do. I was going to say, not, not just... Not just the material things, not right. just money, not just, you know, hey, they have a nice house. Because you might be people that have great things and it looks like they have a wonderful life. But if they're not happy and they're not peaceful and they're not enjoying life, who cares? Yeah. Right? So it's not just about material. It's about taking advice from people that have a lifestyle that you want to you wanna emulate, you want to copy. That's so interesting that you just said that. Um, over the summer, I remember some kids coming over to the house. Their parents came over too and we were visiting with them. And one of the kids said, wow, you guys are rich. And so I asked him what rich meant to him. I mean and, that, yeah. and, you know, what rich means to me is happy and family and peaceful and freedom. It's not the amount of money in your bank account. It's yeah. not the toys that you have. It's And you forgot having an awesome husband. Of course. I forgot. I think she meant to say that. She forgot. <laughs> it was on her list, though. She was getting to it. But, you know, those are the things that make a person truly rich is what's what totally. that feeling is, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. so get educated, do all that kind of stuff. Just just remember, when the fear of staying where you are can can outweigh the fear of going forward, that's when real change is going to happen for you. So yep. just remember that. You've got to start to get uncomfortable with being comfortable. Because if you're comfortable, you're probably not moving ahead. You're not growing. If you're watching this, then you're not comfortable. I hate to tell you. You're not just going, hmm, hmm, hmm. If you're watching this, then you're not comfortable. You're saying to yourself, I wonder what that's all about. And so you have to get uncomfortable with being comfortable, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. So, okay. Um, I feel you. <laughs> All right. You do, huh? All right. <laughs> End of the podcast. <laughs> Stop. All right. Our next question is from James. He says, hi, Glenn and Amber. I like the idea of having rental income when I retire. But all I have heard are horror stories of people dealing with plumbing uh, uh, issues uh, uh, and tenants destroying their houses. What is your experience with this? And do you think being a landlord is worth it? Thanks so much for your time, James. Okay, James, you're right. All those landlord stories are true. <laughs> and that is not what Glenn and I teach our students. So mm. Glenn, how would you answer James' question? Hell no, I don't say being a landlord is worth it. <laughs> so do not be a landlord. We have dozens of rental units and... Many of them, I say many, a handful, five or six of them are within walking distance of our own home. I don't know the tenants. I don't want to know the tenants. I have no interest in knowing them. No, no offense. I treat it like an investment, right? If you invest in the stock market, if that's your thing, you don't necessarily know what's going on. You just put your money there and you just wait for the return. Same thing. That's how I treat my real estate. I'm not an active participant in my real estate. I have a property management, I say I, we, have a property management company that does that work for us. I don't know about the toilets that clog up. I don't know about the doors that are locked. I don't know about the tenants that, you know, had to get out. I know if the tenants destroy a house, I know about that because it's going to cost some extra money, but it doesn't happen all the time. No. But they're still, I let, I pay someone else to handle the horror stories so I can live my life and enjoy the income. Yes, you're going to pay a percentage of your rents coming in, but let me tell you, it is worth every penny to let someone else take care of the headaches. Don't be a landlord. We would teach you how to be a business owner, not a landlord. Yeah, and not only just having to deal with those kind of headache type of issues, but also if you're if you're dealing with the lower paying things as as far as owning rental properties, that's leaving you less time to go out and find yeah. new deals. <laughs> and totally. you want to build your portfolio. I don't know if I've told you this, but um, when I pick up our daughter from school. I often get stuck behind the bus. And so the bus stops at two of our rental properties. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so two oh. of the kids she goes to school with, you know, live in our house. Really? And it's kind of neat just thinking, yeah, they're paying our they're paying our mortgage. And Let's they, not tell yeah. the kids. I don't want them telling my kids. I just do. They don't even know who we are. I don't want to know. Nope. So. so, James, the first thing we <laughs> would funny. tell you. Yeah, right? Yeah. So the first thing we would tell you is to most definitely hire a property management company so that you can focus on the higher income producing activities. And I think your real question is, um, is buying rental properties worth it? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think we would say, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, um, you know, rental portfolio is the best way to create 
true passive retirement income. We have a spreadsheet that we actually have that we show at our workshops that really shows you how you can, you know, buy a house a year or a house a month or a house every six months or a house every three months and how that starts to compound and accumulate um, in your in your uh, in your world and your income that kind of stuff. If you're like if you're like James and you thought to yourself, hey, listen. Um, uh, I, I, I've heard these horror stories. We've all heard them, right? We've all met somebody that was a landlord. They look tired, they look worn out. They said they can't rate together their properties. I'm telling you, they're doing it wrong. They're not doing it right. They are not, they are not treating it like a business. They're going in there. They are doing the job, J-O-B, an actual j a nine to five job of being a property manager. Don't be a property manager, be a business owner. So if you're like James and you were thinking to yourself, oh, I don't know if I want to be a landlord. Good, don't. We were a landlord for our first rental property, whatever that was, 10 years ago. And now, like I said, we've got, I don't know, pushing 50 or something like that, houses, whatever, buildings, and, and we don't, I don't know any of the, I don't want to know them. I just want to know my investment's growing. I like to drive by and smile some house I haven't driven by in six, seven years. I don't, I know nothing about it. I just know my property manager, they're just doing their thing. My people check on it. It's a business. So treat it like a business. So. Yep. So let's recap. Um, our first question was from Billy, and he asked about how to get started when you're young and you have no money. And we want you to know how many resources there really are out there for you to get started. Yep. And then Beth asked about, you know, my husband and I want to flip houses, but we're really scared to do it, that we're letting fear get in our way. And so, you know, when the fear of staying where you are mm -hmm. becomes greater than the fear of having a better life, that's when you'll start to make changes and, and changes for the future and, and living the life that you deserve, living your best life. And then we had um, James that asked about being a landlord. So no, we don't think being a landlord is worth it. So hire a property manager and do the job the right way. Bottom line to all these questions is, is that you, you, you're all asking questions about how to become a successful real estate investor. I want to tell you, you deserve the life that you dream of. Every one of us deserve the life that we dream of. We have to take action to reach those goals, but you deserve. No one's told you that before. I'm telling you, you deserve the life that you're dreaming of, and it's available to you if you just simply take action towards your goals. 100%. So you have been listening to the Real Estate of Mind show. Yep. We are your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. If you found value in this podcast, please write a review for it on iTunes and share it with anybody that you think might be interested. If you want to find us on social media, you can find Glenn and Amber Schwarm on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff. Um, we love doing this for you guys. We love all your questions. So make sure that you put them below and we will answer them in future podcasts. Remember that everyday people really do, just like us, really do create wealth through real estate investing. The only question is, will you be next? So thank you so much for joining us today. Next week, we are going to go over the hot topic of dealing with contractors. Mm, boy. <laughs> the right. love-hate relationship we have with them. Yes. So again, if you have questions, please put it in the message and we will see you next week. See you then. Mm -hmm.